Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's debate. Debate. My name is Dante Cutts. I'm the chairman, and Abby Gibney is the timekeeper. The adjudicator is Mr. Morton. The topic of the debate is that primary school students should cook and serve their own food. The affirmative team seat to my right is from Cabot Dominican College. The negative team seat to my left is from St. Peter Woodlands. Speaking time for this debate is three minutes. And single warning bell sound one minute before the end of this, one minute before the speaking time. And double bell sound in the speaking time. Continuous bell may be rung thirty seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. Please ensure that your mobile phones and other electronic devices are switched off. I declare this debate open and call upon the first to phone a speaker, Neve Ronskill. Good afternoon, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that Australian primary school students should cook and serve their own lunch. We define the topic as to cook, prepare... Prepare food by mixing, combining and heating the ingredients and lunch, a meal eaten in the middle of the day. And to serve, to carry or distribute portions of food and drink. We, the affirmative team, believe that this statement is true. Today's first speaker I will be talking to about two points, lowering obesity rates and the life skills that cooking gives you. Our second speaker will be talking to you about the surprising benefits of cooking with kids and how it can and how it can give children a sense of potential future. And our third speaker will rebut and sum up our case. Now to my first point, lowering obesity rates. One in four one in four Australian children aged two to seventeen were overweight or obese in two thousand fourteen and two thousand fifteen, according to AIWH.gov. This needs to be changed. If you were to prepare and cook food in school, school children will be eating much less highly processed and fatty foods and replacing these foods with healthier alternatives. School children will also be getting into healthy habits, making their own healthy and organic meals, the future and making the future adults of Australia healthier and making Australia's future a better place to be. Now to my second point, the life skills that cooking gives you. Cooking in a school teaches you many things including nutrition, knowing the right foods to eat and learning how to obtain a healthy habits and food, and learning how to properly clean and organise the kitchen, making less of a chance for diseases through trans transmitted through food. Learning respect for food, knowing how much effort goes into it, making goes goes into making food. Also, learning how to handle food in the right way, preventing cross contamination. Contamination. So, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I strongly believe that Australian primary school students should cook and serve their own lunch. Speaker, Mitch Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that Australian primary school students should cook and serve lunches. We, the negative team, believe that this statement is false. We, the negative team, agree with the definition given. 
Today, as first speaker, I'll be talking about children socialising, parents and kids' choices, and hygiene and safety. A second speaker will be talking about the perspective of teachers in school. She'll be talking, talking about the time it takes away from student learning and the use, use of teachers' time and resources and the use of school resources. The third, third speaker will rebut and sum, summarise our case. Now to my rebuttal. The first speaker on the affirmative team has tried to tell you that cooking for school can lower obesity rates. It depends on what the school is making children eat. Parents at home can put healthy food in children's lunches. The first speaker on the negative team has also tried to tell you that cooking in school will give you important life skills. Well, cooking at home uses your own time and it can still teach you important life skills. Plus, you can cook what you want. Why waste time at school? Now to my first point. Children need to socialise. For example, if children are cooking meals, it wastes their leisure time. If children are cooking meals instead of socialising, they're most likely going to mess around because they haven't socialised with friends. If the school day is jam-packed with more things like cooking, it will increase the pressure of, pressure of children to finish work. My next point is that children don't get to choose what they want to eat. And neither do the parents. This means that if the students are serving lunches that the parents don't agree on, this can cause some controversy. This means that a parent may have to pay a minimum of an extra $100 per term. My final point is that children may not know hygiene and safety. Some primary school students don't know what they're doing. Some of them won't wash their hands or follow the regular hygiene and safety. This can put germs in the food and potentially make someone ill. Primary school students may not be able to handle holding a knife or cooking with hot food. This is a safety hazard that is best to be avoided. Would you want your child at home to come home with a burn or cup? In summary, I have talked to you about children needing to socialise, parents and kids' choices and hygiene and safety. In conclusion, I think that we should not have primary school students cook and serve lunches. This is bad because they need to socialise, follow hygiene and safety and choose what they want to eat. Thank you. Upon the second affirmative speaker, Elizabeth Green. Greetings, Mr Chairman, negative team, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for this debate is that Australian primary school students should cook and serve lunch. We, the affirmative team of Cabo Dominican College, believe that this statement is true. Today, our first speaker, Neve, has previously explained to you about how this proposal can encourage healthy eating and even lower obesity rates. In addition, she's explained how teaching young children of primary age to cook is an important life skill for them to learn. As second speaker, I will be clar clarifying the surprising benefits of cooking with primary children, and I will be explaining how these sorts of opportunities can give children a sense of potential opportunities in the future. But before we begin, I would like to point out some flaws in the opposition opposition's arguments. The first speaker of the negative team has attempted to tell you that it uses up socialising time and socialising is important. Well, if it does take up less than time, it, it's, a, it's a subject. It teaches kids about health, hygiene and food, therefore not wasting time. They have many surprising benefits, encouraging healthy eating, it's also STEM related and it doesn't have any homework. Furthermore, he tried to tell you that it's dangerous and unsanitary. Yes, children may be accident prone, but it's part of who they are. They learn, they grow, and they move on. He also tried to tell you that it's unsanitary. Part of this program would to teach kid, be to teach kids about hygiene, not turn them against it. They'd also be taught about personal hygiene, such as washing their hands before coughing and sneezing and touching food. They, 
they had learned that they need to tie back long hair and wear protective clothing. Now we move to my first point. There are numerous surprising benefits of cooking with children. I will be explaining the leading positive outcomes. Zuck.com claims that cooking teaches maths. Using measurements in food is a great undercover way to maths to sneak into the kitchen. It teaches comprehension. Children, children can develop better reading skills and understanding from cooking. It teaches real life science. Cooking provides an opportunity for kids to get hands on experience with basic science. Communication. Cooking at school can teach kids the first hand importance of communicating within a team. Fun. Not only is it fun for the students, but can build positive relationships. My second point is that cooking in schools can develop and give kids an understanding of their potential future. There are many jobs in the food industry. According to foodline.com, there are roughly 150 types of jobs in the food industry. They may include food critic, chef, daily owner, butcher, and even a cake designer, to name a few. You see, this opens up a whole new world of exciting opportunity for future vocations. Opportun opportunities like this are most likely to remain unknown to most children because they are not getting a very large education in food. Who knows, they may have the potential to be the next Curtis Stone or Jamie Oliver boiling up inside them. As second speaker, I leave you with still one member of our team left to persuade you. We do want to give the youngsters of today all the chances and opportunities they can get, don't we? Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that primary school students should cook and serve lunches. We, the negative team, believe this statement is false. The first family speaker has tried to tell you that it stops children who pack junk food from eating unhealthy lunch. This statement is false because children can still pack more junk food if they want it, including unhealthy food. The second affirmative speaker had tried to tell you that cooking at school uses math skills in a practical situation, for example with measurements and fractions. This statement is false because isn't it what math classes are for? Schools should invest instead in more in equipment to make lessons more relevant. Today, our first speaker, Mitchell, has already told you about the point of view of children and parents. His three arguments were children's socialisation, parents and children's choices, and hygiene and safety. As the second speaker, I will be talking about the point of view of teachers and the overall school. I will be talking about how cooking will take time out of students' learning, that it is not a good use of the teacher's time or resources, and that it is not a good use of the school's resources either. Now to my first point, the time cooking would take out of students learning time. A reason to support this is that you can already learn to cook in design technologies and home ec classes. Another reason to support my argument is that students will need time out of learning so they can get the food cooked by lunchtime. My last point for this argument is that cooking is important, but at school it's more important to spend time on maths, English, technologies, STEM and the arts where you have had teachers that have been trained on these subjects, whereas you can cook at home easily. In fact, cooking at home is a fun experience to have with your family. Now to my second point. It is not a good use of teachers' time and resources. A reason to support this is that it is an extra job for the teachers because they need to supervise students cooking. Another reason to support this is that the school has to pay a teacher for lunch cooking lessons, which adds to the expense of the school. Now to my third and final point. This is not a good use of the school's resources. A reason to support this is that food might not get eaten, therefore it would be thrown away. 
A reason to support the, my argument is that there may be cooking injuries with less supervision than students would get at home with a parent, especially if they're younger students who are not used to using knives. In summary, I've talked to you about how students cooking and serving lunches is not a good idea because it would take away time it would take away time away from students learning and it is not a good use of either the teachers time and resources or the school's resources either thank you Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of our debate is that students should cook and serve lunch. We, the affirmative team, agree with this statement. My job as third speaker today is to rebut the negative team and sum up my team's debate. The first of negative team speaker had talked to you how how cooking will take away important time to socialise. This is wrong because they can socialise in the kitchen and work on important team building exercises. There is nothing better than laughing and cooking together in the kitchen and seeing the final result together when you are done. Studies show that when you work in the kitchen together, this improves a ton of skills. He also stated that this will cost way too much money. This is very wrong because, because a normal lunch is on average $4 each. Also, the meal will cost around $2.50, which is way less than the $4. Also, what's the difference between paying for camps, gyms and other necessities, except you're paying for an important skill that would benefit them in their future? The second negative speaker has tried to tell you that this will take up lesson time. This is wrong because this will be a subject, basically an elective, teaching young kids about health, hygiene and food. Therefore, it isn't wasting time. With this subject, there are many benefits that will help a lot of kids, including lowering obesity rates, encouraging healthy eating, and no homework. What kid wouldn't love that? Also, cooking is very STEM related. Cooking, cooking teaches kids about measurement, which is a crucial lesson. Science and comprehension also creep into the kitchen. Like if you have to read, out, read a recipe, which is English, and figure out different food combinations and how they work, which is science. She also attempted to tell you that this is for families. This is very false because a lot of parents work and don't have time to teach a kid about food, let alone being a professional like the teachers. In the modern age, most parents work a nine to five job and don't have the time. At least one parent was employed in 92% of families with children early this year, according to the government. So now to sum up my team's debate. The first speaker of the amazing affirmative team, Neve talked about the amazing life skills. Being able to cook makes life way more efficient and easy. Being able to provide yourself with a meal is something that takes a great deal of time to reach and is something that should be valued with great respect. 90% of Americans don't like to cook and it's costing them thousands each year. If we teach young children how rewarding cooking can be, this will kickstart a huge domino effect. Over 60% of Americans order take in more than once in 2015. That is crazy. She also talked about lowering the obesity rates. A lot of Australians are obese, and we are one of the biggest obese countries in the world. 20% of Australians are obese, and one in four children are overweight. The awesome second speaker, Elizabeth, talked about the surprising benefits of cooking with kids. Cook cooking with kids can be a largely awesome experience, seeing them grow in the kitchen, and then being eager and excited to get ready in the kitchen. She also spoke about giving children a sense of a potential future. Cooking can give kids oodles of jobs, like being a butcher or being a chef. These jobs are super rewarding and pay really well. Like a chef is $80,000 a year for a basic restaurant according to payscale.com. That's amazing and so rewarding with only a few lessons a day. So remember, it is so much better to get in early than get in too late. Wouldn't you love your child to cook?
and negative speaker, Edmund Lee. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of our debate is that primary school students should cook and serve lunches. We, the negative team, strongly believes that this statement is false. I'm, go I'm going to rebut. The first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that cooking food at school will help lower obesity rates. Kids can still bring in snacks and junk food. They have also tried to tell you that it's a good way to learn the life skill of cooking, but you can still learn how to cook at home and you can cook whatever you want. The second affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that it's a time to learn how to cook and math skills can be applied to it. But you can learn how to cook in design and technology classes or home economics for high school. The second affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that it's cheap and just over $4 a day, but in long term, that adds up to tw over $12,000. The affirmative second and third speaker have rebutted that cooking time will happen during class time, but that uses up potential learning time instead. How do you guys, the parents, feel about the money spent using, the money spent used on a simple cooking lesson? The third affirmative speaker has also rebutted that it creates teamwork and cooperation in the kitchen. This statement is false because you won't always have someone to help because that's not how life is. They have also rebutted that there would be no homework, but students will get homework anyway from other subjects. Now I'm going to summarise my team's arguments and then conclude. Today our first speaker, Mitch, on the negative team, argued the point of view of children and parents. Children's socialisation, parents and children's choices, and hygiene and safety. For example, for example he said, if ch for if children are cooking, they get less leisure and rest time. Our second speaker on the negative team argued the point of view of teachers and the school. Cooking takes time out of students' potential learning. It's not good use of teachers' time and not a good use of the school's resources. She said that the school needs to pay for another teacher to over oversee the students' cooking, which adds to the school's expenses. Therefore, it is clear to see from all our arguments that Australian primary school students should not cook and serve lunch. Thank you. And now we invite the adjudicator, Mr. Morton, forward. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And I have to say, first off, I wasn't actually aware that I was being filmed for this adjudication. So, unfortunately, another board member has put me on the spot. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is David Morton. I'm actually also on the board of Debating SA. So, uh, Miss Lara and I go through and adjudicate and train the adjudicators that we have in the debates that you'll see through all three rounds. So, look, round of applause again for these guys, please. <laughs> There is no doubt the quality of the debate that we just saw tonight is of a higher standard than we usually see in this competition. So, look, guys, you've done remarkably well. That said, I am extremely disappointed that no one is wearing crazy hair. I think I said some of the parents and teachers <laughs> here before. I would have liked to see some crazy hairstyles, and I really hope you do have that time uh, after this debate to change and dress up. You are as well, aren't you? You've got to put some crazy hair on. Why aren't you wearing your crazy hair anymore? Only because, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Only because I couldn't see the speakers yeah. probably as it dripped through my hair there. So I do apologise about that, but I will put that blue wig on and we will get a good photo after this debate. And look, tremendous job. As our role as adjudicators, we give some individual feedback and some team feedback. So like what I want to say is I loved how you guys went about reasoning your arguments. And I'll touch on some individual points as we go through here, but it was genuinely well done on both sides there. So I'll start with Neve first. Neve, break starts at the back. Strong definition, clear and precise. You broke down each individual word and element of the topic and you defined it and put it in a way that really helped cement your team case tonight. And I think you did that remarkably well. For me, I guess the feedback for you is, and it might have been because you were on camera tonight, obviously the eye contact, the presentation in that aspect there. I couldn't really fault how you developed your arguments, that was very well done, but just it gets a little bit nerve-wracking when you've got a camera focused on you and you just got to make sure that you don't 
take that too much to heart, just let it flow naturally as you go through. Quite often you will get filled. Uh, this year, assuming you two teams make it to the quarterfinals, or oh, sorry, so say the semi-finals, those debates are filled. So get used to being on camera if you guys want to, because we will film all those debates. On to the first uh, negative. Uh, Mitchell, great start to the debate and straight into rebuttal, which is what we want to see. Um, you know, very polished speaker. You got up there and you were very loud. We could hear you. Um, very clear and coherent arguments there. I particularly liked uh, your first point when you started talking about the socialising aspect of it. Um, for me, I would, have, I would have liked to have seen in that particular point some of the times taken to socialise. So when you start trying to argue the point of where it's taking away from the time that kids have to socialise, how much time do they have at school to socialise? How long is your recess time? How long is your lunch time? Use those sorts of things. That helps to reason out the argument and really cement that home. And then the opposition has a bit of a harder challenge tonight to argue that point again. Otherwise, well done. Uh, on to the second affirmative, Elizabeth. Uh, I put here very good uh, reasoning in your second point there. I particularly liked how you went about talking about the food industry. You know, you had some websites to show... Um, the jobs. You talked about the future vocations of the students that need to learn these skills and you actually had some very good sources there to show how many jobs there actually are in the hospitality industry and how this is actually going to benefit those uh, students that do or choose to take up um, cooking or serving lunch. I think that was remarkable there. I loved your first point there about using measurements. You know, the cooking element combines various elements of each individual subject that they do teach in school. It teaches you the math skills, it teaches you the science skills, it teaches you the English skills, it teaches you the food handling skills, it teaches you the writing skills, and of course you have fun whilst you do it. And I think you did that very, very well there. For you, my feedback is to be very careful on the rebuttal points. So you, when you try to attack the unsanitary argument, you actually try to do it twice. And I think you had it written down twice in there. So, if you find yourself rereading the same point, I would have just skipped over that and gone, and gone through. Because you argued it, and then you said unsanitary again, and I thought, you've just argued that. So I don't know if you were sharing palm cards from your first speakers. Just be very careful what, which, which cards you've got. I'm not going to discourage you from doing rebuttal, because we want every speaker to learn rebuttal. That's part of a good competition, and it's part of great critical thinking skills. We want you guys, all of you, to make sure that you, you're on, your, on the feet, and you're thinking about the arguments as you go through. But if you think you've got a little bit too much bubble, feel free to pull it off to the third speaker to get that uh, job done. Otherwise, well done. Uh, on to the second negative. Uh, Isla? Isla. Isla. Sorry, Isla. Uh, great start to the debate. Straight into a bubble. Tick, tick. That's, and that's what we want to see. I loved how you went about your three points there. Usually in a three minute debate, I tend to discourage three points because you, it's, it's very hard to flesh out three points in three minutes. But you did that remarkably well. You know, your first point there, you started looking, talking about the learning time there. Um, I loved your second point, you know, it's not a very good use of teacher's time. I wonder if the coach had anything to do with that, <laughs> maybe just hinting that in your, in your direction there. But it worked very well for your team case there. I loved the fact that you talked about that it was not a very good use of school resources, particularly when there's a lot of food waste, or there could be a lot of food waste in there. For me, I would have liked to see maybe a little bit more evidence um, chucked in there, just to reason out those arguments. Talk about, if you're going to use a teacher's time example, how much time they spend each day uh, writing curriculums, doing all the marking, all the homework that you guys have got to do, then you can really say how much time they don't actually have in the day to get this sort of stuff done. And be very careful, when you start talking about um, the fact that the uh, second negative speaker talked about the math skills, you know how they said it teaches to teach you math skills. You said this is false. Well, it actually does teach you math skills. So I would have just changed the words there. So. What your team did remarkably well tonight is you had the yes but arguments. Yes, it does teach you math skills, but it doesn't teach you everything that you need to learn in maths. It doesn't teach you the algebra skills you need to know. It doesn't teach you, yes, it teaches you the fraction skills, but it doesn't teach you the division skills that you need to know in each year level. So just change the words slightly as you rebut uh, and go forth from there. On to the third affirmative, Joseph. I put here, logical systematic rebuttal. You took to task arguing each and every point that the opposition uh, raised today. And I think you had sensational paraphrasing. You had a very good balance there, the 70-30 split there, worked very well in your favour there. I think for me, just be careful of timing. Yeah. So as soon as you hear that second bell, you've really got to go think to yourself, oh, I've got 30 seconds to get this speech done. How can I get this sentence done uh, as quick as possible? Without speeding up, but without having to go through another two palm cards as you go through. Because as soon as you hit that third bell, the structure marks can come down there. So just be very careful, make sure you get that uh, done in time. And lastly, but not leastly, uh, Edmund. Edmund, great start to debate and straight into rebuttal, which is what we want to see. 
You went about tackling the opposition's team case from the first, second and third speakers very, very well there. I think for you, I'd work on the summary. So what the first, uh, sorry, what the third affirmative speaker did is they really put those arguments that their team had raised in their own words. So rather than just rehashing out, because you still have a little bit of time to use, rather than rehashing out exactly what they said dot for dot, use a bit of uh, themes of making a thematic sort of summary and put it in your own words. Part of a really good summary and a really good paraphrasing is showing that you understand your first and second speakers almost as well as what they said it themselves. But put it in your own words so we know that you understand your own key in case there. And be very careful, in one part of your rebuttal there, I loved how you went about tackling what they said to argue one of your points. So you tried to defend your own points there, but when you said something down the lines of uh, cooking time will happen during lesson, uh, cooking, cooking these lunches or serving these lunches will happen during lesson times, how would you feel about this? Okay, so that statement is trying to appeal to the emotions of the audience. You'll try to sway that by talking about the feelings. Try to stay away from that, that loose of reasoning with emotive statements and, that, and those sort of things. Some teams will smack that right back at you, but as a third negative speaker, uh, it's my job as adjudicator's job to just let you know that that is going down the fallacy of thought. So be very careful not to raise those sorts of statements. Look, it was a very close debate. I think it actually did come down to less than one in the score. Unfortunately, I don't want to criticise and disagree with uh, another board member tonight, but I did give it uh, by a very small margin to the affirmative team tonight. Congratulations. Tonight, I did award the Division Debating Award, even though I don't have one right now, because we need to get one. I did award that to the first negative. Congratulations. I call upon a member of the negative team to give a word of thanks. On behalf of the negative team, we would like to thank the affirmative team for a great debate. Thank you for tonight's chairperson and timekeeper for running our debate smoothly. We would also like to thank the adjudicator for your time and for your very helpful feedback. And lastly, we thank you, the audience, for coming out to watch our debate and to support us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, St. Peter's Woodlands, for giving us a great debate. Thank you for the timekeeper, and thank you for all the parents for coming out tonight, and thank you, Nazareth, <laughs> Nazareth for, ho for hosting this debate. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I now declare this debate closed. Thank <laughs> you.